How's it going guys? This is Casey Dunnigan, owner of Flies and Ties Fly Company. Today I want to share with you my favorite adult midge pattern. This fly is called the Stuck in the Shuck Midge. Um, we're going to start off with our ADOT black tying thread. This is a MFC ADOT black. And you're going to start about, you know, one to one and a half uh, eye lengths behind the eye here. If you can see that, okay? And then our next material we want to tie in, um, this is brown on Antron. It's going to be our trailing shuck, okay? Um, not a lot of fibers, maybe 10 fibers or so of Antron. So I'm just going to kind of do a pinch wrap on the top here, trap that in, and I'm just going to wrap this back. Staying on the flat plane of the hook the whole time here. All right, so now uh, you can trim your shuck material here to about one hook length. All right, and then you can come in and trim off your excess in the front here. And then uh, we're gonna next tie in uh, white floral fiber. The floral fiber is going to simulate uh, an overwing in a sense. Um, you know, that, you know, a, an adult midge has, you know, a wing that lays flat down on its body, unlike a mayfly whose wings stand, you know, straight up or perpendicular to their body. But um, a midge's wings are flat down and parallel to its body. Okay, so I'm going to tie in my floral fiber right in front of my antron shuck here. I'm just going to come in here and trim off the front and maybe just pull it in a little bit make sure make sure you're just not disrupting your shuck in the back here okay and then you can wrap forward the hook I have in here is a size 22 uh, Daiichi 1110 straight eye hook I prefer straight eye hooks over down eye hooks for dry flies, personally. And you can certainly use a down eye hook, no doubt. Okay, so now I'm going to return my thread and build up a little bit of a head here too, so I got a flat plane. I'm going to return my thread about a third of the way back on the hook here, all right? Uh, next thing we're going to tie in is our hackle. Um, so obviously you want to size your hackle appropriate to your hook size. Um, if any of you guys are new to tying dry flies, Whiting's hackle uh, makes a hackle gauge. And the way that this works is, you know, you take your hackle in a sense and you lay it down around this little button in it per se and uh, you can that's how you size your hackle so anyways what I like to do is strip off a little bit of the stem here on the hackle and so you have a concave side and a convex side to uh, your hackle so you want the concave side which is almost like a dish in a sense facing towards the back it's almost like a cup uh, facing towards the back of the hook here. All right. So I'm going to lay my hackle right at that one third mark, and I'm going to run over top of that stem there. Okay. This is one of those flies that you can really carry, get carried away and crowd the eye of the hook, so you want to be mindful of your wraps and things like that. Um, then our last material we're going to tie in here is a piece of peacock curl. Okay, um, you want to try and pick a piece of peacock curl that doesn't have super long fibers. All right, Let me get my hackle out of the way here, and you can strip off a little bit of the stem too as well. 
um, you can see it has a flat spot you know just pretty much like any other any other uh, feather stem so you'll kind of lay that flat spot right down there and try not to disrupt your hackle feather There we go. Okay. So you want to tie that in. Cut off the butt. Make sure we're okay and good to go. All right, now, so I only do about three wraps. One, two, three. Like I said, you don't want to get carried away too much with these really small sizes. Make one, two wraps over top, two wraps in front, and you'll be secure there, okay? And come in, trim that nice and close. Okay. If that's still in focus, we're good there. All right. So now what you're going to do is come and pummel your hackle right through there. One, two, and three, and that's good. You can probably even get away with two, to be honest. All right. Now with your hackle, same deal. You need to come up in front of it. One, two wraps on top, and then come in front of it, which really locks everything in place. Okay. And come and trim your stem off and if you have you know I have a couple fibers here that I trapped you know just kind of clip them off all right okay so we got our hackle palmered on so now the last step is we're gonna bring our wing up over top okay and you're just going to bring it right down in between your hackle fibers. And you're going to tie this off right in front of the eye of the hook here. So I like to make about three wraps on top and then come in front. And I'm going to leave that long for now that wing in the front. I'm going to grab a hold of it and whip finish right in front of it. One, two, three. And boom. Come in and cut your thread off. Cut the rest of your wing material off. Okay. So now you have that overwing there. All right. So our fly is pretty much finished. Now with these really small midge patterns, um, what I like to do is actually come up underneath uh, the hackle and kind of trim about um, maybe about 70 degrees or so. Of the hackle. Actually, it'd probably be a little bit more than that. It'd probably be about maybe about 110 degrees. So I'm gonna take the I'll take that out and show you what it's gonna look like from looking at the front. So this way, you know, when your when your midge actually lands on the water, it's gonna ride, you know, and make you know with that trimmed on the bottom with that V cut out, um, it'll ride correctly in the water. You know, your hook will stay down, and uh, I actually learned that from. Uh, John Barr's book, uh, Bar Flies, many years ago when I first started tutting. So you can see on the bottom, you'll have that nice, that nice flat spot, and the weight of the hook will keel that fly for you and uh, keep it riding correctly. 
all right um, this pattern has caught fish for me in Cheeseman Canyon which you know many of you know if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and you're from Colorado um, those fish can be a real pain in the rear but uh, this fish is or this uh, fly has fooled a lot of fish for me uh, it's one of the best midge patterns I've ever fished and I'd say my other top two midge patterns would be probably Matt's midge and a really small um, parachute atoms so uh, I encourage you guys to give this a try uh, if I didn't mention it it's just a grizzly hackle on this fly itself uh, my time down to a size 24 uh, 26 but um, yeah that's about it um, if you guys have any questions just shoot me an email uh, on my website or you could you know message me directly right through my YouTube channel very responsive I mean I'm happy to help anybody that I can when I first started you know there wasn't a lot of people willing to help me everything was a secret for whatever reason so hope you guys enjoyed it tie a few up and uh, you know go educate some educated fish take it easy so before we end the video completely I wanted to go over a little bit of a like a rigging technique for you guys um, especially when fishing very small midges that are extremely hard to see to begin with. Uh, one time I was fishing um, one of our tailwaters here in Colorado and I was pretty new you know I didn't really know that much and there's fish rising all over the place and you know I couldn't buy one but uh, there was an old timer there uh, pretty much just picking off any fish that he wanted so you know we've this is the fly we just tied this is our you know our size 22 uh, midge that we just got done tying on the vise here right so you've got your tippet attached and down the line here this is bio strike from loon so I have a little a little knot like a little surgeon's knot tied um, this is probably about running about six inches away from the fly obviously you can go much longer um, so this is a way to kind of track where your fly is on the water. So, you know, you can kind of find that little yellow, uh, pink dot, you know, this is pink bio strike from loon. And then, you know, you kind of just follow in front and all of a sudden, you know, there's your midge. So if you're fishing really, really, really tiny flies, you know, you're down at a 26, this bio strike can really, really help you track. Um, obviously you want to try and keep it away from the midge as far as possible. But, you know, like I said, uh, this will definitely give you an advantage to sight where, you know, your fly did land and uh, kind of give you that advantage. So, you know, I think this might help a lot of people. I mean, it helped me, you know, especially uh, me being so new and, you know, trying to track a size 26, 24, you know, dry fly is pretty, you know, pretty daunting at times especially in low light or you know whatever whatever the conditions may be so you know I hope you find this a little bit useful I mean I know I did it was uh, kind of a game changer for me and I mean I would have never thought of that um, Loon Biostrike's been around for quite a long time so um, I mean you can use it in um, for micro nymphing too uh, as far as you, you know replacing an indicator but uh, I mean it's not gonna float very well you know if you got some some heavy weighted nymph on it just for really really small stuff so uh, hope this helps and uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time take it easy